we need some ideas to fix this Mariners offense. We need some ideas. Do you have an idea? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I do. And if you've been on social media this week, you know what that idea is. I have a proposal that I would like to lay out here. Again, if you checked our social channels, you might know where I'm going with this. Mariners have a rotation that you have to capitalize on, right? You have to. This rotation is too good. It's so young. Nobody's getting paid besides Luis. And they need to do everything possible to make sure they optimize on this opportunity. That would involve probably being aggressive at the trade deadline, right? There's a certain team that's not winning a lot right now. And if they continue not to win, they may be forced to be in a sell mode at the deadline. So I would like to preface this idea by saying, is this total fan brain? Possibly yes. Are there about a million barriers that they would ha- the Mariners would have to hurdle for it to make it happen? Also, yes. Am I still hell-bent on the idea? You bet your ass I am. And what is that idea? <sighs> the Mariners should trade for Kyle Tucker. Do you run this idea by Dana Brown? Well, dude claims they're not selling. Yeah, buddy, you're not selling on May 8th and May 9th. Shocker. Now, if it's July 31st and you're eight games under 500 and you've got no business competing in 2024, you're selling. Now, does that mean you're going to sell Kyle Tucker? I don't know. You're probably going to trade off Verlander and Alex Bregman, who are going to be free agents at the end of the year. You're not getting the return on those guys that you get for Kyle Tucker. I seem to recall Kyle Tucker doesn't have an extension, does he? Kyle Tucker has a year and a half left on his contract, doesn't have an extension. The Astros are third in baseball in payroll they're third like you know the new york mets the heavily heavily caveat or the heavily praised or not praised team for having a crazy payroll they're only two spots below them the steve cohen run new york mets 2025 they're seven that payroll's high and they've paid a lot of guys they paid altuve they paid yordan they've paid a bunch of guys in the bullpen with hater and montero they paid jose abreu how many more guys can you pay They're not going to be able to pay everybody. That's the case with every team. Tucker doesn't have an extension, and the Astros are losing. Therefore, I propose the Mariners go all in, full send, this deadline. Trade for Kyle Tucker. Okay, so you asked the question, is it fan brain? I'm going to say probably yes. It, It probably is yes. But a trade like this isn't something that can't be done. Here's how you think about a trade like this. If we're going to be 100% realistic. So we've seen Juan Soto now get traded twice. Kyle Tucker's not Juan Soto as a hitter. He's closer than you might think. But he's not Juan Soto as a hitter. But Kyle Tucker is a bit better out in the outfield as well. So that could be a semi-decent comparison when the Yankees traded for Soto with one year of control in this offseason before he hits free agency. Now, I'm sure the Yankees expect to sign Soto to an extension if they can, but if they don't, the package that they gave up really wasn't all that much. They gave up the White Sox current number three prospect, Drew Thorpe, who is part of the Dylan Cease trade, and then they have a bunch of guys who are essentially net zero war big leaguers, like a handful that are net zero war. Really, the price is not that much. Now, here's what the, the problem the Mariners would have in this situation. It would take a king's ransom to trade Kyle Tucker, a player that good, to a division rival to play you 15 times a season. It would, you would really have to make it worth Houston's time to make this happen. The haul would be pretty massive, but you got to do it. You would have to, if if there's even a 1% or half percent chance of this being available to you, the fit couldn't be better. Right, You have your two corner outfielders. If you believe in Dom Canzone for the future, there's one. You have Kyle Tucker as the other. And then you have Julio in center. That You don't have to platoon anymore. You have your starting three outfielders every single day. You're athletic. You cover enough ground. You got strong arms out there. The other thing, I think just about every team in baseball would want to trade for Kyle Tucker if he was available. So, yeah, you bet there would be a bidding war for him. And the you would be up against teams with they might not not have better farm systems but they certainly would be a lot farther away from houston than than seattle is while playing in that division so lyle 
I like your idea. I like your thinking. The other thing that the Mariners have working for them and or teams looking to trade for Kyle Tucker do in this situation. So you mentioned all the guys the Astros have paid. You didn't mention the guys the Astros haven't paid yet. Alex Bregman's going to be a free agent. They decide to pay him. That makes it even less likely they keep Kyle Tucker. They also got to play uh, pay Framber Valdez. He's not going to be cheap either. The, there are decisions that are going to have to be made here. And if Kyle Tucker's the most expensive of all these guys, that makes it seem like it would be the least likely he gets the extension. So here's all my counterpoints and, and to build off of what you said. Would Kyle Tucker being traded in division be a huge hurdle for the Mariners? Yes, of course it would. However, I'm not saying Kendall Graveman is Kyle Tucker, but it's not like impactful players can't be traded within your own division. Kendall Graveman was one of the best relievers in baseball when that trade happened. He was on top of his game. He was on top of the world. He got traded within the division. That did happen. So it's possible. The other counterpoint is, did any Mariners fan out there, did any of you truly believe before you got that pass and notification in late July on that night in 2022 that said Luis Castillo being traded to the Seattle Mariners? Did you ever for a second believe the Seattle Mariners were going to acquire Luis Castillo? No, you didn't. You did not think the Mariners were going to get Luis Castillo, but they did. It took a haul to get him, but they got him and it was worth it. So year and a half left on his contract like Tucker, year and a half left on his contract like Castillo. Just saying. I think most people wanted him and knew they needed a starting pitcher. I think people just knowing the franchise they were rooting for set their expectations a little bit lower. So bring him back up. Think Luis Castillo and think to yourselves, it's possible. Think to yourselves, okay. it's possible. And here's, and here's what I'll say too. Kyle Tucker's not a Boris guy. So you know how the Mariners traded for Luis and about a month and a half later extended him? Kyle Tucker is going to be very expensive, but you want to talk about extension candidates like we've talked about on some of our live streams, which, by, by the way, if you guys don't know, we go live every Sunday night on Instagram and YouTube to take your questions. So come hang out with us and send us your questions if you got time on Sunday nights. Logan, Cal, George, we've talked about who's the most likely to get extended. You go trade for Kyle Tucker. I don't care the prospect call you're giving up. If you can get that extension done, 150% worth it. So you ask yourself this question. If you're okay parting with a package of Emerson Hancock, Harry Ford, and then one, uh, let's say Ty Peter, Johnny Farmel, I, I think that's what it would take in division to get a player like Kyle Tucker. If you ask yourself that question and you say, yes, I'm okay parting with those players to acquire Kyle Tucker, which I personally am as much as I love those guys, I think Kyle Tucker would insurmountably increase the Mariners' chances of winning a World Series. So, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing that. <laughs> I just can't throw trade packages out there of specific players because I just don't know. I, I, like, because then the White Sox fans will come, come for your throat and say, how dare you, Lyle? <laughs> well, maybe it's partly that. But no, like, again, we've seen what some of the trade packages have been over the offseason. And it's trades that I never would have guessed. I would have thought Juan Soto would have costed a lot more. So I'm not going to pretend to throw packages out there personally. Like I know exactly what it would cost to get them. However, I would be calling and I would be seeing what it would take. I'll tell you that. Is this fan brain? Again, probably yes. But I'm serious in the fact that if the Astros keep losing and you're not going to extend Tucker, they very well might trade him. So I'm just throwing it out there. Would you consider the same thing for Alex Bregman this year? Mm, I don't know. Because Alex Bregman plays third base. I, I'm not saying at their peaks, Bregman is obvious. Like, is Bregman historically a better player than Rojas and Urias? Of course. But he's not hitting so great right now. He's got half a year on his deal, and he can only play third base. So there's not a lot of ways you can move that around. Maybe Rojas starts playing other positions if that's the case. But Bregman also would be a rental. So yeah. I don't know. if I, He would cost less, but he would be more of a rental. I'm thinking long-term plan here. Again, same idea. The Mariners very clearly had the blueprint laid out that if they trade for Luis Castillo, no, he's not a Boris guy, expected to compensate him fairly. They said, this is a guy we want to extend basically before we ever traded for him. They knew that. Kyle Tucker feels like a guy, if, if they trade for him, 
That's a guy they have in mind saying, we want to get an extension done. Hmm. Remember when we had Ty on a couple weeks ago, and he keeps saying how it's been hard for the Mariners to find uh, Robin to Julio's Batman? That has been the case so far. I'll tell you what. They've got a Robin if they trade for Kyle Tucker. And truthfully, Robin might be getting a little power happy if he was if he was in the Pacific Northwest in terms of how close does he get to Batman. Of course, Kyle Tucker's not a better player than Julio when they're both at their peak, but gets close. It's Julio, but it's 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 not by a whole ton. So again, I it's it's Am I allowed it's, to comment on this after what I said in the offseason? Am I, am I allowed in good faith to say that as someone who called Kyle Tucker an aircraft carrier and Julio not? Because, <laughs> I forgot. because you know, I, I did retract my statement. I realized what I said was stupid and probably should have been framed differently. But I mean, we're talking about two similar caliber hitters. If we're be if we're if we're being 100 percent in the box. Yeah, like at their peaks, they offer very similar profiles. Julio's got a a little bit more power, but Kyle Tucker can mash 30. No problem. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, athletic playing out there in the corner outfield. Julio's advantage is that he's a little faster. He's a little bigger and he plays center. But otherwise, I mean, we're talking, you know, 140 WRC plus with both of them. And you take that. Certainly. And yeah. what's better than one aircraft ter- carrier liar? It's two. <laughs> Unbeatable. That's what I'm talking about. People are probably going to get mad that we just spent 15 minutes talking about this too. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Guess what? It's fun to fantasize about ideas. Sometimes people, it really is like, like so, like so many people are such or are so cynical out there. TJ and I are fans of the team. People know that. So naturally, sometimes we get ideas. We think they're half decent ideas. We want to talk about them. I'm not saying this is going to happen. Is it a 0% chance? I won't quite say that because I do think there, there's points that we've made that are valid between, again, if the Astros keep losing, they cannot pay everybody. Their payroll's high. It's just an idea. Before we move on, can I can, – oh, go ahead, actually. Let's let's, let me put a proposal for for the people who want to call us idiots and think, think this is lunacy. Okay, you are more than fair to think that. Give us a different proposal. Can you find us another player who can bring the impact the Mariners will need in this lineup? Because right now they need it. Oh, and and this is, and this would be, I mean, this would be an, make an astronomical Luis Castillo level difference to this lineup where people, you know, uh, so many people have been asking for the resources to be spent, like a true, like bonafide stud in the lineup, not like, like a, a year after year all star, like top twenty player in the sport level, good. That mm-hmm. would be it right here. So if you don't like this idea, can you give us another one? Please yeah. give us another one. Do the research. Go find us another bona fide top twenty player who's on the who could be on the block this year, whose team's terrible, who the Mariners actually could acquire. Thank you. I, I love that you proposed it like that. That is our that is our ask, people. If you're going to hop in the comments and say, you morons this, and it's never, hop- it's never happening that, give us an idea otherwise. Give us a thought-out idea. Because what happens so much of the time is there's people on Twitter that are going to complain nonstop saying, why don't they ever do anything? Why don't they acquire, imp- like, acquire an impact player? Why don't they ever do what it takes to put them over the top? Here's two people sitting here saying, here's an idea to get them over the top. But then those same people who put those thoughts out on Twitter will then comment on ideas like this and say, you morons, like that's not happening. So give us an idea. I will say, though, last thing before we move on, man, have I had a field day in our comment section about this post. I have replied to almost every single person who has commented on this Kyle Tucker idea on social media. And I'm having a blast with it, too. There's Astros fans that are in our replies. They're getting so pissed off. I'm going to give you a couple examples. There was somebody that's <laughs> like, there was somebody that replies with the start of the Jordan Alvarez home run call from the ALCS. Somebody says Alvarez launches deep right field, to which I respond to this Astros fan. Tucker races back at the track, at the wall, makes the catch, robs Jordan of a home run. Mariners get out of the inning unscathed. Like, I'm very clearly trolling back at this guy. And people like that keep replying. Like, they keep responding to, like, somehow can't read on the fact that we're very clearly trolling them back. 
and they just keep going. Or some people will tell us you're stuck on idiot mode and you got like, this is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. And I'll respond being like, false. We actually graduated at the top of our class from Harvard and ball knower. So you're wrong. <laughs> I have had such a field day with these Astros fans in our comments. I got to tell you, it has been a blast. So, so yeah. Well, dog, to conclude all of this, I'll just say, good idea. I like it. 